my name is Arne Hessenbrook. Uh, I'm a consultant. I um, work in helping uh, Northern European companies in the US market in energy, and my company is called Muninsight. Um, a long time ago, uh, I wrote a PhD on the history of X rays from 1896 to 1928. And um, that's what I want to tell you about uh, today. And it's really the aspect of the MIT, you know, the market implementation and technology and the iteration between them uh, that I want to, to tell you about. The one thing maybe to set it up is that when I was doing my PhD, I was reading a lot of material. I was reading journals from the time I was going into archives and, and so on. So I, 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 I learned a lot of things about what was going on, both in the market, in the implementation, and in the technology. And it was a god-awful mess, really. And the, the challenge for me was to write a PhD, that is, to write a narrative of what was going on that had a kind of logic to it, um, um, a, a linear story somehow, because uh, that's what you get a PhD for, that you, you are able to present all this mess in a way that makes sense, in a, in a way that is kind of digestible for the reader. And that, that is an interesting process, but the point is that it obscures the mess. This, that's really the big problem with, with something like this, that the, the, the narrative has to be digestible and somehow simple, and it necessarily obscures the mess. So one of the things I want to do today is to talk about the, the, the iteration of market implementation and technology and, and actually point to a lot of the mess. And I hope that's very helpful for you. Market implementation technology by the example of early x-rays. The lecture here is about the iteration of MIT, Market Implementation and Technology, um, and I will instantiate this theme through um, the history of x-rays um, from 1896 to 1928, uh, sorry, 1915 roughly. So this is the general theme, um, the iterative innovation model and I will be talking about uh, the market, the technology, and the implementation in the case of x-rays, and we'll be um, thinking about iteration in, this, um, in these terms here. Um, x-rays were discovered in late 1895, and then they um, became very well known in 1896 um, because people were immensely fascinated with them. Um, the very first publication contained a photo of um, an x-ray photo of a hand um, where you can see the bones inside the hand and this thought that you would um, see the bones before death was absolutely fascinating at the time. And um, the, the cartoon on the left here is, is really a case in point where somebody is uh, supposedly taking a, an x-ray photo, um, although it looks like just a very normal uh, photographer, um, of a farmer. And, of course, the point is to make him look like um, death. Um, to the right uh, is another cartoon. Uh, also from 1896, that shows um, some of the the early associations that people had with uh, X-rays. In the bottom, almost left corner, is something that is kind of sensible from our perspective. It was um, it's a it's a customs officer who's using an X-ray machine to check out what is inside a um, um, a big uh, a box. Um, which is indeed um, what we recognize because it's used in that fashion today. Um, 
But in the top left corner, we have a cartoon of somebody seeing through the walls of a house to see what's going on inside. And um, over to the right in the middle, we have the thought that somebody's walking in the streets with a, with a dog. And x-rays can be used to see through the, the coat and the clothing in general. Um, to see the, the, the privacy and, um, and this breach of privacy is really um, a concern for people at the time and the bottom right is, is really kind of um, amusing in that respect because it shows people in the street now wearing uh, armors, um, metallic clothing to protect themselves from the breach of privacy with the x-rays. Um, None of it is, uh, is of course, uh, f really feasible, but with the new technology, people were imagining things, and it's these imaginations that are, is, uh, that, that, that are um, shown up in, this, in these um, cartoons from 1896. So let's start thinking about um, x-rays from the perspective of innovation. Um, if you were... Uh, an entrepreneur uh, in 1896 and there was this new technology you might have thought well how could I make some money with this and the very first way in which money was made with x-rays was really as a performance because people were absolutely fascinated by by these uh, x-rays and um, so one of the um, earliest ways that this was done was Thomas Edison, the, the famous um, inventor of the light bulb and so on. Now Edison um, in New York City had a, a darkened room with red light set up um, and then he would have people file in from the outside paying to get in and as they would get into this darkened room they would put a hand on a table, um, or under a table, sorry, and on the table itself was a fluorescent screen and under the hand would be an x-ray tube and the x-ray tube would go upwards through the hand onto the fluorescent screen and then you would be able to see the bones of the hand. And as it says there on the, um, in the quote here, many visitors flinched, some crossed themselves devoutly after a fearsome glance, but most poked fun at the strange look of each other's bones. It was just good entertainment, but it was also um, slightly scary and morbid, and people were not quite sure what to make of it, although it was, by and large, just fun. And um, on the right, we have um, a page of advertising from the magazine Nature, which is indeed the very same magazine that is now um, an elite scientific magazine. It started uh, in the mid nineteenth century, and so by eighteen ninety six, it was it was uh, already very well established, although it was a very British uh, journal at the time. Um, but this uh, page of advertising is is interesting for us. Um, at the top, you'll see um, J J Hicks. Uh, this is an instrument maker who's um, advertising his particular form of an X-ray tube. Um, and in the middle, you then have an, a very interesting um, description of the problems that lecturers on x-rays have. This is the one by W.I. Chadwick, who's also an instrument maker. And um, as, it, as it says in the, on the left-hand side, difficult to get the experiment or the trick to work all the time. Is, is, um, that's what Chadwick is talking about. So his, his point is that, that his machinery is reliable and stable and you can get it to work um, most of the time, all the, all of the time, and that you need to keep your paying audience happy. Um, the issue was that um, sometimes the x-ray tube didn't work. Not, it wasn't really quite uh, clear to operators why it didn't, didn't work. Um, there could be all kinds of issues with it. Uh, or it would work maybe not very well, so it would flicker, or um, the the contrast between, say, bones and 
and the soft tissue were, were not that clear. Um, and sometimes it would, uh, you would have to adjust things and it could take a while uh, to get it to work. It could take you know, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. But you can't really perform with an audience if you say, oops, hang on, let me just uh, uh, adjust the screws here and do this, that and the other while people are waiting. Um, if you charge your audience money, they want the entertainment now and not uh, whenever you get ready. So this was a, a crucial point at the time. It was important to, to sort of get the stuff uh, um, ready to perform at all times. And in the bottom right, um, you see a very interesting little um, advertisement, which is uh, illusionism. You know, this is conjuring apparatus. Um, and and the, the point that this flags up really is that these kinds of experiments that we think of as scientific experiments could be done in front of an audience and it really was entertainment, it was really performance and you had to get the, the, the trick to work all the time. It's, it's the same kind of problematic that you have as an illusion, illusionist or a, a magician, a stage magician to um, to get things to work every time and please the audience. Um, so in this very scientific journal, um, it's kind of amusing to to have clearly shown up with the juxtaposition of scientific instrumentation and this kind of stage magician that this is this is in fact what it was about. Mm -hmm.